Many of the commonly reported negative effects of a low carb diet, low energy, headaches, brain fog, are actually the result of something else. It's not the low carbs, it's that they need to bump their sodium. It's true, if you go on a low carb diet, increase your sodium intake and watch how great you feel. A lot of people don't realize that low carb diets suck water out of your body, including sodium, and you need to replace that to feel better. You know, this is um, <clears throat> this was kind of top of mind for me this this past weekend. It's, I'm on week. Uh, I'm actually this will be my third my third shot again of taking the the GLP one again, but I'm doing like a smaller dose. Yeah. But uh, I do already notice that um, I'm eating less, and I had a, a day or two I think in a row where I actually didn't get that, and it like kind of didn't dawn on me. And I felt like fatigue. I had like a mild headache as soon as I drank the element tea, like poof, yeah, like right away. And I feel like that's not um, for the the GLP space. I don't hear anyone really de- talking a lot about that. I know Doctor Seeds mentioned it, uh, but I haven't heard that. Yeah, uh, like being for as much as that's talked about, I don't hear that. Like like that's got to be a it must. Was, I feel like yeah. So because uh, so just kind of off off topic, but uh, they it reduces your appetite, but it also reduces your thirst signal, and so you have a compounding effect because you're eating less. And a significant percentage of our fluid intake comes from our food, not majority, but enough to where if you drop your food intake, your water intake tends to drop unless you replace it with more water. But because the GLP one also reduces thirst or the mm-hmm. the, the signal for more water, you tend to see that. Yeah, and so needing more fluid and then bumping sodium uh, can help quite a bit. But with low carb diets, you know, we, they used to call it keto flu. Remember yeah. that? Keto, keto flu. diet was all popular. Yep. Oh, don't worry. Push through it. You know, keto flu is you, you feel like crap, but after a couple of weeks or whatever, it was sodium. It's yep. sodium. Cause when you go on a low carb diet, if you on a regular diet, if all, let's say your calories are controlled. Okay. So we're not going to go from like terrible standard American diet to all of a sudden you're tracking your macros and you're going low carb. Let's just say, same calories, 2,500, 2,500, but one diet is, you know, traditional carbohydrate intake. The other diet is like zero to 50 grams. So you'd say it's a keto diet. You're going to notice rapid weight loss in that first week. It's not fat, by the way. We all know this now. This is pretty well established. It's not that you lost a lot of fat in that first week. It's that you get rid of a lot of water. Yeah. And along with that, you get, you just feel like garbage. Yeah. Fatigue. And, yes. I mean, you get fatigue, you get brain fog, you get a lot of those things, which I was like surprised because I'm like, I'm eating cleaner. I'm, you know, adjusting my diet. So I should have like this nice, uh, clean energy to burn. But in fact, I'm not retaining that water. And, uh, you know, that was a big performance drop for me. Right. And so what happens when you lose all that water, you lose a lot of sodium as well. So people will replace the water, but then their electrolyte imbalance is off. So one of the, I mean, if you're on a low carb diet, if you're on a keto diet, a carnivore diet, and I'll even add, if you switched from a diet that was mostly processed foods, like the standard American diet, and you move to a very unprocessed food diet, so you just cleaned up your diet, let's say. Yeah, just whole foods. All of those scenarios, most people would benefit from adding sodium to their diet. And it's like, when you're so when your electrolyte balance is off because of those one of those four scenarios, and then you you replace it within minutes, you know, 10, 15 minutes, it's a radical change in how you feel. So I'll take somebody like this, low carb or whatever, they feel like garbage. I'll that's what I do. I'll, I'll say, have a, a packet of LMNT and some water. Yeah. Let's wait 30 minutes to see how you feel. I'm like, oh my God, I feel way better. I feel so much different. Um, it makes a tremendous difference. When your sodium is low or electro, ele- electrolytes are low. You feel your performance sucks. Yeah. You don't get good pumps. I see you get headaches. Headaches that is a big, a big one. part of it. And then starting to kind of supplement more with uh, electrolytes. Like really, that in itself uh, made a big dent. And yeah. So. Did, have you guys seen the data? I think I brought it up on an old episode on migraines and uh, sodium. No. Yeah. So people who suffer from chronic migraines, a significant portion or percentage of them benefit from bumping their sodium intake. Yeah. Um, uh, and they start to notice, uh, that they don't get as many migraines. This is my cousin, my cousin. I just saw them this weekend. I was at my nephew's birthday party and, um, she comes over and she's like, my wife gets migraine. Now my wife's migraines are better with hydration, all that, but there's something else going on with her. She's had it since she was a baby. So we were talking about how bad they can get. And my cousin's like, Oh, I just, uh, you know, uh, the sponsor you work with Sal, I'm like, Oh, element. She's like, yeah, I do that. And it makes a big difference on my migraines. My Jessica's noticed a difference as well, but hers. There's something else going on. She's had since she was a kid. We can't really figure out what's happening. She still gets some benefit from bumping it up. Yeah, yeah. So...
Today's giveaway on YouTube. Ready? Maps Anabolic Advanced. If you want to potentially win, do this. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. Also, only one day left for the July sale. Maps split half off and the Sexy Athlete Bundle of Programs also half off. If you're interested, you have to take a course now. You got to do it in the next 24 hours. Just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Speaking of being a kid, which one of you had the note about uh, stuff you got made fun of as a kid and then is different than when you get oh, as an, uh, an adult? Oh, like, that was just a general thought that I had. Is that you? Uh, yeah, because uh, we were- I, I was actually just thinking about the other day. That's why I asked. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, it's like uh, almost everything. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> almost everything <laughs> that you get made fun of as a kid. If you're in elementary, junior high, and high school, yeah. then later as an adult, it's cool. It is cool. Yeah. Yeah. No. Reading. Being a nerd, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like all the all those types of things. Playing an instrument, making your own like yeah. food, you know, yeah. instead of being independent. You know, like all these all these things that like you would make you kind of uncool growing up tend to make you like a cool person yeah. when you get when you get older. Even like one, the one that I think about is playing an instrument, like, unless it's like a guitar or you're in a rock <laughs> yeah. band. Yeah, you know, if you play like a saxophone a flute. or you play yeah. any any instrument aside from the quote unquote cool ones. You're going to get made fun of, you know, violin, right? Yeah, yeah. Then when you're in like your mid 20s, especially in your 30s, yeah. You know, bust that out on a date. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Just Play an this. instrument after yeah, after dinner. You if know what you're saying? a guy and you pull out a violin yeah. and you start playing it, no, no, like, I feel oh like God. it's coming back, but that was a little bit of a disconnect for me when I was in the high school setting and I was coaching. Like the most popular kid who was like, you know, your stereotypical, like he's the quarterback, like he's like, you know, he has all the friends and all this. You know what he did on the weekends? What? what? He played Dungeons and Dragons and drank soda with his friends. Oh, wow. really? Yeah. Wow. That's and I not, was like, that's not common. Yeah, I you just, know, I, I scratched a, my head, but I was like, that was it's, it was a different culture. I think shift. The D Dungeons and Dragons, I think, is because the is strategy making its way. No, it's making it was because of Stranger Things. Yes, 100%. and I think it's making its way to cool kids. Is that it's what been they, around long enough? Is that that's what why. they were playing in Stranger Things? Yeah, it was that's it actually what it's the all game? based around. Oh, okay, well, what, now did they call it Dungeons and Dragons on there, or they called it something else? I don't know. Yeah, that's basically what it is. Because other than that, it's like they call it D and right? That's what they call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, like my my oldest, he he was he's all big into that you know that was uh, he was yeah, he still is oh he still is they play still in college they get together groups and they go crazy with it wow yeah i'm trying to organize it so <laughs> i'm that, not sure if that ever gets cool huh i'm not sure if that ever it's gets starting cool. to uh, justin called it you're, you're hearing it more and more because it's been around so long i think it's because it's been around so long yeah old things start to get cool you know because yeah. it was invented in what in the 1970s yeah, if I'm not was, mistaken. Yeah, it was. So uh, give me like the, the the high level or short version yeah. just of it. It's like, is there strategy involved? Of course. Or is it just all it's, like dorky, like role you, play? Yeah, I mean. It's it, both. It's both. Yeah, you have. <laughs> You have sort of like you know your, play? your game master. I played it like when I was like in elementary school. Oh, so you did play it? I did play. Yeah, I, okay. I, I hung out with nerds, dude. Like I, I kind of went back and forth with nerds and then the jocks, and I was like somewhere in between. Yeah. Uh, mainly because I was trying to relate to my brother because he's like an uber nerd. Yeah. You know? and so <laughs> now, like, did your brother play all growing up? He played a little bit. Uh, you know what's funny about the whole thing? It's because it's like my parents are like super, super conservative Christians. So it was like, they're like, you guys are like, it's like rebellious. witchcraft. It's like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so, like, so I was doing it like they're wizards, yeah. sneakily. Oh, you yeah, were rebelling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt like, yeah, I felt like I was doing, uh, you know, I was being like a, bad. Ouija, like a Ouija yeah. board. Yeah, exactly. I'm summoning the no, devil. No, Ouija or board is different. Yeah. I almost feel like, oh, that's, yeah, I don't, I don't fuck with Ouija boards. I did when I was a kid. Really? I did. Yeah, we talked about this before. I yeah. know. No yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I know. And now but, I'm learning. But, hey, that shit's real. Hey, <laughs> don't mess with that. Hey, finish, finish telling me. Okay, so yeah. what can I get? Like a like a high well, level. I'm gonna do a terrible job because it's been since like elementary school that I played. But it's like a roll, like you roll dice. And, and Andrew, do you know? Did you ever play? I don't feel like you played. I feel like you were a jock. <laughs> I feel like I think I feel I was like, like you were, I wasn't like I feel like serious. you were cooler than Justin. Yeah, did you? There's like you? a dungeon I never master. Sat down at a table and played it, but I had been invited to play video games versions of it. And what I know about the game is basically like kids come together, they decide like what the adventure is going to be, they all pick a role, and then they play, which are like most video games nowadays, okay. role playing games. So all the scenarios kind of happen, and then you figure out what to do based off of like your character. Like, you know, okay. what, what kind of powers you have, how you can level up, you know, all those kinds of things. And is there, is, and there's cards, right, that go with uh -huh. it? Yeah. 
This and so, the... like, uh, okay, let, we agree that the adventure is going to be we all go rescue the princess and well, we have the to game slay master it. decides that. Yeah. Okay, well, let's just say we agreed on that, or okay. with the game master. Game yeah. master says we're going to go slay a dragon and or save yeah. a princess. And then along the way, we run into a dragon. We run into a moat. We is that like how? I don't know if you tell them all that. So we've been trying to organize a game with my There's oldest. So many nerds mad at us right now. I know. <laughs> Listen, I can't understand. Super. Offended. I don't understand it. Yeah, I haven't played yet, but apparently we'll get a caller now that will bring it up. So uh, we'll be able to address. So it. So apparently you pick. You pick. You can pick what kind of a world it is. Is it fantasy? Is it sci-fi? Um, is it like a, you know western? I mean, you can go all over the place. Then you have a game master, and then you all pick different characters, and the game master tells a story, and then when your character comes in, you play the character. You speak like the character. Some people get as get into as much as <laughs> dressing up like the you, character. You LARP it. You yeah. Know, you, you oh, so we could actually take it to play. this level where, like, I mean, does this happen where, we, let's say we're all like this, and I'm the game master, and I go, okay, it's Monday when we meet. It's yeah. it's. Uh, Western theme, yeah. you know, yeah, and so and so then you guys would show up. You're knowing the archer, the theme is already. Yeah, you're like the dwarf. West, yeah, I'm you a know, Western uh, wizard. Wow, yeah. this could be fun. There's could hella be. character, like hella yeah. categories too. I'm like. definitely a sorcerer. Yeah, are you? No, I just <laughs> I want to be. <laughs> yeah, now, Doug, is this like power. all over your head? Or are you not familiar with it? It's any of this? totally over my head. This, yeah, Never this, played it. Yeah, yeah, they didn't have this in the 40s. Yeah. At all, this came away. <laughs> Come on. This came away. He, hey, he was alive when Dungeons and Dragons existed. <laughs> yeah. Well, we <laughs> fought real dragons. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> game of Thrones. Let me style. tell you where they made that game from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, used to, I used to ride a dragon Stones to school. Stones and sticks. What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. No, it's, uh, uh, and you can play for a long time. One game can last months yeah okay so how do you determine the end of the game or how you win the like how do you master. yeah nobody wins it's a story that everybody yeah, completes the, together that leads to you know a peak mm. yeah it, yeah that sounds terrible it's it, it, i know i think the same thing it's like a way to spend your time listen together, i don't right? want to be arrogant because if if this game is is lasted for decades and it's, it's maintained it's popularity. It's fun if you're creative and you're like into Oh, like there's no winning or losing. Fantasizing. Yeah. At least not the conventional way. It's storytelling. D yeah. And so, for, so listen, I don't want to be arrogant because here's Wait, a did game. Did I say d and G? I think I said D&G before. Uh, D&G. Yeah. <laughs> what was D&G? Yeah. I mean, D&G. D &G D &G Dolce and uh, Gabbana. Yeah. 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 Adam. <laughs> so it's lasted decades. It's it has lasted through the digital age where people play video games and whatever. It's still a tabletop game. Terrible people, movie. Yeah. So it's it to me, it's like it's got to. There's got to be something to it, right? Oh, Otherwise, yeah. how would it last so long? No, it's fun. I could see. I mean, in there, in in, in the nerds' defense, I mean, it's like the people uh, could pick apart the all of us grown men that watch other grown men play sports Bro. and root for and, a team. Yeah, you paint your and, face and, 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 and fantasy football is the same thing. It, it, I mean, yeah. yeah so it's, except it, that ends. It's yeah. it's fair. Yeah. yeah, and again, I don't know. It simulates a lot of real life scenarios. I don't know. I, I just don't know about the fantasy world, like simulating too much in the real world. Here, it seems like to me. Yeah. So there, there's no winner of it. Got to use your imagination. Does the does the does the the, the what you call him the game? What'd you say? Master. The, the game master. Yeah. Does the game master like like doesn't uh, like, play? The game master is not in the game. They're, oh. They're helping tell the story. Oh, so I'm just orchestrating Correct. it. Correct. So like you might now this happens. So you Boom, might and then yeah. everyone has to react. Okay, so like you you this is I really am interested in how this works. Uh, you, you want to play? I don't. I just <laughs> yeah. want to under. I just want to understand it. Like so, we have this theme. We agree to some Western curious. theme. I'm the game master. Do I? Do you play a card that determines the direction of the story? No, the game master. I think tells sets the stage. I think they set it up and each person time. tells a piece of the story as you move along. And so everybody's working together to create this story, this 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 big story. One of them, one of these stories was turned into an animated film on, uh, was it Amazon Prime? I can't remember the name of it. It was actually a popular animated film that mm. was based off of an actual game of Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Yeah. And I, like, again, like I said, I know this because I've been trying to organize this. You know, like kids. Stranger Things hold like a uh, story, backstory and all that. There's a backstory? Of course. No. Yeah. I a lot of those are based off of like conspiracy, like with what? the Monotok monster and um, in, in a lot of the experiments uh, with MK Ultra experience oh, and things wow. like, so all of that is like, you know, where they experiment on kids with their psychic abilities and, 
and all of that kind of stuff. They were basing it off of like seventies, like conspiracy theory lore. Wow. Yeah. There you go right there. The so honor that was among, also based on honor among thieves of 2023. was a fantasy action comedy film is based off the popular tabletop. Oh, game. well that's not based on an actual game that happened. No, the one that I'm talking about, I can't remember the name of it. It's an animated. So, film. okay. Uh, so then I, uh, I decide like when this ends, like just be maybe because everybody like, together, like, you know, Justin decides when it gets to his turn, he's just like, and then I shot the bad guy yeah. and got the girl. And then yeah. I'm like, and that's the end. Is that yeah, how? I, like, guess. <laughs> I guess. But you've never played it that long, so I don't know. Apparently, you do. You got to make the voices and everything too. You have to be in character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's interesting. It is. It is. There, uh, there's a very, very small part of me that wants to see. Oh, that's it. Legends of Vox uh, Machina. That was actually a, an actual game that people played, like an actual specific game that got turned into that uh, that actual Dungeons show. and Dragons TV series. There's even a TV series. Around. Yeah, it's see? a thing, dude. Yeah, bro. It's, it's a, is it's a, a, is a, is a, Don't a franchise. The can you look up? Is the franchise worth a lot of money? Like who owns who owns the rights? Dude, to it's it? got to be. Yeah, who's yeah, the, who so owns the have rights? No to idea. It? Like that's that's got to be huge. That's even oh, more. Now, that's, that's, that's now more, look at them. Yeah, that's more. That's more interesting to me. Hasbro. Oh, Hasbro owns it. Hasbro. I don't think they started it though. I think it was started by no. They acquired it for twenty five million dollars when in nineteen ninety seven. Oh, uh, good, what's good it worth now? Steel. I know it's got to be worth way more now. They bought it yeah. for twenty five million. Yeah, yeah, because they had GI Joes. Who's the founder? Let's look him up. Like, cause where where is he at now? You could get so, cashed out. At so you want to hear the world that we all decided? This is so. It's supposed to be me, my son, my oh, daughter. Did you play? We haven't played it yet. We're trying to organize it. So we decided that we're going to be in a cyberpunk, uh, sci fi reality. And drugs will be involved. That was my wow. four, my fucking fourteen year old daughter said. Let's bring drugs into it. Like, <laughs> what? Wow! What? Your daughter said that. Listen, listen. Oh my god! Listen, she's on fire, dude. Uh, my daughter. She's a spitfire, dude. dude. She's this such week, a spitfire. hey, listen. This <laughs> this bring the drugs. This in. weekend, I really I saw things in her, and I'm like, you know what? She's a lot like me. Ah, oh, shit. So you know what she was doing? Hmm. She comes out of her room, and she's got her hair tied back. She's obviously summertime, no school, right? And she's like, um can I get some ice? I'm like, well, yeah, some ice in the fridge or freezer or whatever. So she gets some, and then she gets a big metal bowl, fills it with water and puts ice in it. I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, I'm going to put my, I'm going to dip my face in it. I'm like, why? She's like, cause I heard it's a good morning routine. I'm going to do it every single morning. So I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> Next thing yeah, now she's asking me about supplements. She's about, you know, performance mm -hmm. and her dark humor. And I'm adding everything up. Uh, you know, she, her, she's like, like, overly ambitious and, and, and competitive and I'm adding all of this up. I'm like, uh Oh, I did not realize this. She's a lot like, I am. Uh, wow. Between a hundred and 150 million in annual revenue. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, That's that, a good one. I didn't realize. Wow. That kind of not now, now, now you respect it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I'm interested. There's uh, money involved. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's it. That's crazy. Hey, speaking of money, I got to ask you about this, Adam. Yeah. You're doing a, it's free, right? Webinar. Oh, with Jason. Okay, so super cool. You're going to teach coaches. Let me get this straight because this is going to be. I don't. I don't think I've ever seen one of these. How to build a seven to eight eight figure. Yeah. So, so how you can basically become a millionaire coaching. So yes, and in addition to that, uh, Jason's going to be announcing something really big on it, and I can't talk about what that's going to be oh. yet. But it'll be pretty cool for, especially anybody that's a serial entrepreneur, especially obviously if in your in the health, fitness, coaching uh, business, because we're going to do a deep dive on his business, on our business, what it's like scale, scaling them, the challenges that we've had, uh, and then of course the big news that Jason has to announce, and so and it's absolutely free. So there's it's absolutely free. I know the time. If you can't make the time, I believe you're going to be able to do a replay. I don't know if Doug. Doug oh, you Doug know. wrote it up there. August seventh, uh, seven p.m. Eastern, four p.m. Pacific, and you go to ncimindpump.com. Yes. So up. you can register. Register now. So here's the deal. And I believe you. In order to get the replay, you obviously have to register. So if you if you want the replay, you're going to need to register. If you can't make the actual time, is if we if you make the time, you're going to be able to interact with Jason and I, ask live questions, and interact with us. If you can't, you can at least watch the talk. Uh, so if you I, tip, I get typically in our space, I get annoyed with uh, stuff like how to be a seven figure fitness. Uh, and I look at the people teaching. I'm like, you've never done it. How do you yeah. know? But you guys have. Can I? Can I so tell you? You something got Jason Phillips and you, who yeah, are no proven track record. Arguably that. the now, two, the yeah. two best people to listen to. 
for something like this. I haven't, everybody else sucks. Everybody else has never done it on their own. They've just taught people how to do something that they've never done. So their business is teaching people something. They make a million dollars off of you purchasing their idea to yes, make a million dollars. You guys have actually done it. So this is crazy. Since you guys brought this up, can I share with you something that I learned this just recently that is kind of shot ourselves in the foot that I was unaware of? What do we do? Mm. Uh, I mean, and it's you, you kind of pointed it out. Like one of the things that we tend to, uh, I mean, our goal is to help trainers become such good trainers that they make seven and eight figures, but we've chose to not market with that strategy, yeah. right? And I, I think that just comes from our integrity of this, like, you know, the, the, how cheesy that is and how a lot of people that haven't even made that kind of money present themselves at, and we just didn't want to get lumped in that yes. category. And it's just like, and our our philosophy and style is if we teach you how to be a, a, a great communicator, a good trainer, a good coach, the money comes, right? Mm -hmm. But that's kind of also hurt us. And I didn't know, like, so if we were to present everything the way we do, like the way we teach coaching right now. And like, if you look at our, our Instagram page, the, the trainer, mind pump trainers, right. Mm -hmm. And you see how you and I are doing videos and Justin's doing yeah. videos on like how we're teaching. If we literally just started those videos with how to make seven or eight figures or how to make more money as a coach and then gave that advice. And then we put ourselves on YouTube and YouTube shorts under the category of finance. We literally like seven X our ad revenue on YouTube. Why? Because the RSM that they pay for financial advice Shut up. is significantly higher than that. training. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you didn't and, tell us. No, but like it's, <laughs> we're not doing that. Yeah. Like that, that's again, this is a compromise that I don't think yeah. we were trying to do back then. Uh, yeah, no, and I, and I think we're going to compromise. All this. right, the time uh, yeah. is right. Yeah, so I'm, so I'm like, which is interesting, right? So we're going to make level now. We're going to do this free webinar thing. Um, I actually was talking to Dylan um, this weekend. We were hanging out, and one of the things I brought up to him is like, hey. There's there's nothing wrong with you know instead of us being like just uh, mind pump coaching and 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 yeah. just giving that same exact coaching advice but but leading it with how to make more money and be more successful financially as a trainer if we just preface it with that or start it with that and yeah. we build a page around financial advice around there it all of a sudden it, it's like five to seven x the ad revenue Crazy. so you have to have significantly smaller of an audience and you know why that is i'm sure you can guess yeah, of course bro people interested in making more money that's, tend to yeah that's yeah it. and the people that pay for the advertising of yeah. course so you're going to get people that are chasing to make seven eight figures the type of ad revenue that comes yeah, to those pages wow. versus someone who's just workout advice yeah, or more supplements. interested in yes fitness space, something like that fitness space is not a great money maker it? it's not <laughs> it's, it's not. not and so that also gives nah. me a little uh i mean it, i understand now why you have that hey our goal was to help people wasn't to make money to help people make yeah. money doing it right so right we, we did in that order right all right fine but <laughs> but anyways so that was just top of mind because you brought that up uh, but yeah jason and i are gonna uh, dive into that and uh it's a total free webinar wow. for our audience so if you're listening right now and uh you haven't registered go register it's absolutely free it's going to be a great discussion anytime i get to talk yeah. to you i love talking business with jason yeah, two best um two so best it's gonna business. be it's gonna be a lot of you fun. guys remember that that free solo uh documentary yes. yeah yeah well i got something that's kind of similar but it's like uh i think they call it the skywalkers like oh so i saw the, the the guy and the girl yes i didn't watch it though. it's fantastically done what oh really movie? really cool um so their whole thing is they go to the very tops of these these structures, buildings, skyscrapers, and they'll go to like the cranes and, and climb all the way to the very, very top, take some ridiculous picture, have drones kind of flying around them where they're like above the entire city. And it's it's like death defying stuff. Bro, it gives me anxiety it's, just listening I'm to you sweating. talk. It's yes. so like gnarly. And they do this without a You've without seen equipment. this, Sal, before. We share, remember when this was a viral sensation? It's the like coolest pictures five, and videos you've ever seen, though. Like nobody's willing to. And the thing is, like, they're all worried about people copycatting. I'm like, nobody's going to copycat that. <laughs> like, first of all, there's there's security guards Those and all floors. that on the top floors that they figured out these genius ways of, like... Um, well, because they're breaking laws here. Yeah, they're breaking laws. They're getting they're getting through uh, and putting on disguises. They're it, It's really interesting to kind of watch to see how they, like, navigate through, like, some of these really difficult buildings. And, like, they want to be the first to, like, there's this one... 
uh, in Malaysia, I believe that, that nobody had done it yet. And it was like their ultimate goal to do it. And the background of the girl is really interesting because she came up from like a circus background and her parents were in the circus sense. and trapeze. And, that makes sense. Yeah. And so, um, so, so her thing was to start doing these like gymnastic kind of poses on top of these structures. And it's like, it just, oh my God, dude. Like I, I get sweat out of my eyes don't, watching it. Don't you guys remember this? I, I want to say it was like five, seven years ago. We were doing this. Okay. And I don't remember which one of you started. I, I thought it was you, Sal. I thought you remember this. They, there was, there's a, like a whole movement on Instagram and has been for a long time now of stuff like this, mm -hmm. of people videoing them on edges of buildings and, and skyscrapers like this. Yeah. And I was like, I can't even watch it. I couldn't even watch the the, the reels so they, on Instagram. Yeah. They, I guess they kind of started the trend um, and they go through the, how they connected. Cause you know, she wanted to start doing it, but in a creative way, he was already doing all these like crazy structures that everybody was like, wow, I can't believe you climbed that. And it's, Dude, they do these where they're like on top of, they're just hanging like in between like these, these towers and just like holding on with one hand and one foot. And they're like holding hands in the middle of nothing, you know, no. but, but like hundreds of feet below. Wow. <laughs> you know, what's weird about ah! that is I don't think I have, I'm not, I don't think I'm afraid of heights at all, but that shit like gives well, me that's anxiety. You're normal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know. But that's not a regular, that's like no, a normal fear, bro. No. Yeah, that's another. It's I wonder other. if Jessica knows who that is. You said she's in the, she, she was in the circus. Trapeze she was in the circus. For she a bit. might know who she is. I don't think she competed as much in that, but this is kind of like where she found her niche. You know, that whole, that whole, the, the circus tradition, uh, uh, huge in Italy and Eastern Europe. That's where they, that's where oh, they yeah, get the, a lot you, of I think they're Ukraine, yeah. Russian, yeah, yep, yep. Uh, backgrounds. So. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's very popular. I saw that. That popped, that popped up on our, our, would uh, you rather, watch it though? It's, it's it's a trip. Could, Would you true. rather climb? Here's a good question. Would you rather climb a crane, like one of those long, tall ass cranes with no safety harness, or give a speech to 50,000 people live? 50,000 people. <laughs> 50,000 people. And you'd rather do the crane? Yeah. Oh, uh, no. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. hell no. Yeah, hell yeah. no. Those right. are the two biggest uh, top fears. They would fears. both suck, but you know. Are those, those are the two top fears. Are heights, heights, heights and public I know speaking. public speaking. Well, is. actually, it depends on what I had to speak upon. How about that? If it was like something like completely outside of my comfort, <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, give, give, well, give then that might get, well, shit, that might get me like that too. They're That's like, what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to do some dissertation yeah, on some yeah, like crazy yeah. scientific study. Like, I'm out, like, dude. Yeah. Just I'm have out. slides. Just point to the slides and talk about what's Yeah, just all pictures. You know? <laughs> I don't know. Even then, I'm, I could probably see myself uh, being able to muster the courage to bullshit my way through yeah. a situation like that than to get But up I couldn't on, like just climb, climb, anxiety. climb, 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 you know? you're looking around oh then your hands start to lose Ooh. yeah that's well, that, my palms are sweaty right now just talking about trippy because she she actually went through that because she like hurt her injured her hand uh as they're trying to escape from security and like was going through this whole thing to to try to to get back into like not having the fear she let the fear come in and so started climbing again and then like, was paralyzed when she was out on the structure and it was like hanging and was just like i can't do it i can't do it and then you feel that as you're watching it. And you're just like, oh my God, imagine you start getting paralyzed where you, you're like, I can't move. I can't move. You know where that happens often? Uh, what is it? Uh, half Dome, where people will hike Half Dome and they have to stop because because you're, you're, do, you're doing it with the guide. Mm -hmm. The guide will take you up. So it's mm -hmm. not like a, a lot of people do Half Dome. It's hard, but a lot of people do it. They'll oftentimes have to stop because someone will freeze and then they have to like get them back down. Oh, I didn't know that was clear. That out. Yeah, it's not uh, that uncommon. So weird that you put yourself in something like that when you know that it's not. I guess, I guess That's some the people. That's excitement. Are, right. Well I, well, I guess some people too are trying to challenge and overcome their fears, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm sure they there's plenty that fail then at attempting to dude, do that. <laughs> dude, you were bringing up communication earlier. I got to tell you, you got my. My three-year-old who's just, the kid oh. is just, oh, God. Uh, I don't what, know what I'm going to do oh, with him, dude. Now, bro? I heard him talking shit to his mom. <laughs> <yesterday>. <laughs> talking <laughs> shit. Bro, he's three. How's he talking shit already? Dude. So he was, I don't know what it was. He was mad. He, he wanted to do something. She wouldn't let him. So he's trying to get at her. So he'll say something like, I don't like you. You're a bad person. She's like, whatever. It doesn't affect me, right? So we had, she had just gotten her car washed earlier that day. So it was all clean. And she was talking about, oh my God, I love how my car is clean and this and that. So that was earlier in the day. So this is later on. They're getting out of the car and he's mad at her and he's walking inside all pissed off. And he's like, and your car looks ugly. It doesn't even look clean. He's walking in. I'm like, what is <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> your car, your car looks oh, ugly. Bro. It's not clean. 
Wow. Next level, dude. Dude, yeah, I know. Dude. I'm like, next level. Bro. He's like just finding the button. Where's Listen, the button? I, just, I, I don't know what's happening recently, but he's uh, he's been coming in a, like five o'clock in the morning. He'll walk in our room now. Just no problem. And Jessica's really good about like not telling him, don't come. Because if he ever needs to get us, we don't want him to feel like he can't, right? Yeah, yeah. So now he's decided he's going to do this every single freaking morning, dude. And so I get up and I'm trying to like shield him from her so she can get a little bit of sleep because I get up any, early anyway. Yeah. So he comes, and he's he's cute, right? He tries to be quiet about it. He opens the door. He walks in. So I'm like, hey, hey, buddy, let's go downstairs. We'll go make some pancakes. He's like, no, 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 no. He's like, I just have to tell mom something. I'm like, no, no, let's let her sleep. No, no, I think I'm going to tell her something. And I'm like, I'm going to take you downstairs right now. And then he starts doing this. No, no. He starts doing it under his voice. No, I'm going to talk to mom. No. And I'm like, oh, he's going to wake up his sister. So oh, like, my. Go talk to your mom, dude. <laughs> and then she's mad at you. Why'd you let him come in? No, <laughs> she's really good. Because yeah. I want to just pick him up. Right, you know? right. But then right. I know that it'll, it'll be to, even, It'll be even bro, worse. Bro, the kid is just. Dude, just speaking of kids coming in the room. Out. So yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Max Max will some do the same thing, right? He'll come in like at you know three or four in the morning. And he, I think he's figured this out. He's figured out that if we're like knocked out and he climbs in the bed, like no one's going to get up and take him back to his bed. If he comes in at like 11 or midnight and one of us kind of wake, it's like, okay, buddy, back to your room. And then we bring him back to his room where if he slides in at three, four in the morning, it's already like, we're like, oh, yeah, you know, sleep. yeah, just let him kind of climb in. So he, he does that, right? So the other morning or like middle of the night, whatever, he comes in and Katrina is out. She's not in the room. She's in another room and stuff like that. She was going, she was having some pain. I think I was told, telling you guys some of the stuff that she's dealing with right now. And so she was like, had a heating pad on herself and she was out of the room. And so it's just me and him. So he comes climbing in next to me. And so uh, I don't know if you've ever seen him with Katrina. He does this. Uh, Katrina has like this little mole underneath her neck. And so he... That's how he sues himself. And he he's done it, it. He's done it since he was a how baby. Cute. He's done it since he's a baby, That's right? So cute. So he, and when he comes in at like three or four in the morning like this, he's also like sleepwalking. Like you can try and talk to him. Hey, buddy. And he doesn't even, he doesn't yeah. acknowledge you. He just like crawls right in and then he's out right mm -hmm. away. And then he'll right away, he'll he'll like rub her mole and then be out, right? So I'm in there. I don't think he realizes it's just me and him. And <laughs> so he's appeared. laying here. And dude, I'm like trying, I'm like trying to see him. He's looking for the mole. <laughs> You know, fingers going up my nose. He's like, reach. And I'm like, I have to go, Max, it's daddy. It's, it's, not mommy. it's not mommy. You know, and he like looks up he's like, and then he leaves. You don't even want to see, you want to sleep next to me. Ah, forget it. Yeah, but I can't rub, can't rub mom's nose. But it was, dude, it was so annoying. He's like rubbing all over my face. And it like, took me a minute to realize, what is he doing? I'm like, oh, he's huh. looking for his mom's mole. Oh, he's like dude. looking for to find it and he can't find it on my neck. He fits my funny, face. Yeah. We, were at a, we were at my, <clears throat> I told you guys, my nephew's uh, birthday party over the weekend and uh it was at there's like this little farm on the way to half moon bay because he lives yeah where there. all the animals the farms are yeah for kids. yeah it's cool yeah, yeah i don't know what that place is called it's but called uh they have like goats yeah, and, yeah okay so you've been there yeah that place is great yeah, so anyway cool. we're there and you want to see like i've told you guys about my nephew he's my brother <clears throat> reincarnated he gets in the goat where the goats are and most kids are like timid, yeah. kind of scared of the goats, of goats. Go and feed them. But no, bro, he was chasing them, headlocking oh. them. They're running. <laughs> I'm like, I looked at my brother. I'm like, he's one of those goats to get a knock yeah. kid out, dude. So my brother's like kind of going behind him to just walk. But he's chasing Don't these like things. Headbutt you, dude. Yeah. They get all like. Rrr. Dude, he doesn't care, bro. That's he so does crazy. not care. He's just like my brother. He's just reckless. Yeah. Nuts. Chasing him around. We're all cracking up because my brother's exhausted. He's a, he's a great dad. He's such a good dad. But he gets tired because his kids have his son, and now his youngest already. His youngest just turned one, just started walking. I'm like, you're dead, bro. Because keeping up with his son is so hard because he has endless energy. Now he's got two. Mm -hmm. The other one's like that too. Oh I'm like, my God. oh, bro, you're good. You're gonna have to baby proof everything oh, yeah. because you know. The, the, you know, how, you know how I was telling you guys that like. You know, one of the things that like I have hard time is like Max is like very can be very timid about things, and I'm like, but I also tell you, I've told you guys too. But I remember how I was as this kid, where I like, yeah. I wasn't, I was, I wasn't afraid so much as like I want to do what I want to do on my terms, and so I would do these like really risky, dangerous things if it was something I want to do. But if somebody else tried to goat me into doing something, I'd be like, no, I don't want to, you know. And then it would come off that way, right? And this is a, a trait that I see in my son to the point where it's like, it's so funny when you see it come out. Like he's, so he's got one of those big, uh, you know, blow up slides. And I have a video of it. I'll share with you guys. It was fo so funny. And I'm sitting there and it, he's, you know, he's been playing on this thing for, I don't know how many months now we've had it for almost a year or whatever. 
and now he's off the top of it. He jumps and launches himself and shoots off almost to where he's going to come flying out to the point where I got really nervous. I had to slide my chair closer in case because there's concrete yeah. right on the other side of it. I'm like, but there you go. But yeah, but I'm letting him do it. Like, and Katrina comes out and she's like, I can't believe you're letting him do it. I'm like, let's let him push himself like that. Like, I want that. I want him to have that trait. And the fact that he's doing it on his own, like, I don't want to tell him, yeah. like, don't do that. I'm all scared because he's already that way with a lot of other things. So it's really interesting to see that side of his personality come out where you think he's just so timid and scared to do stuff. But then all of a sudden you see this other thing that's way more risky that he's down you know, to you do. You brought up a great yep. point where sometimes you bend a little bit because you know their tendencies, you know? So you kind of want to- like, Totally. Because you know, otherwise you would be like, don't do it. So with my 14 year old, my daughter, I was telling you guys earlier, we had another moment where, you know, we have a great relationship, right? We joke around, talk or whatever. And we were hanging out and she's like, I, I want you guys to watch this show with me. And my daughter's never really asked us to, to watch something with her because she's totally into the show. So I'm like, mm. well, what's, what is it? She's like, bear with me. She's like, it's cringy. It's a dating show. I'm like, okay. She's like, but it's not like any other dating show. This is like a really good one. There's some captivating parts. I'm like, <laughs> so she's trying to sell me. So I'm like, but you know, I want to bond. I want to connect with her, right? Right, right? So I'm like, what is it called? Love Island. So oh like, my God. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what this show is. Okay. So I'm like, all right, let's put it on. So remember my daughter's 14. Oh so I God. put it on and it's all about, I I know it's bro, it it's yes. all sex appeal. Yeah, and, yeah. Like, and they try and get him to cheat by bringing yeah, a bunch of other. Yeah, they make yeah. out, they play games when they're making out. And I'm sitting there and Jessica and I are sitting there gritting our teeth. And I'm like, okay, she's let us in. Yeah. yeah. This is a trust thing. Yeah, you can't she's freak out. She's a teenager. Out. Yeah, you yeah. can't freak out. The dad in me wants to be like, you're not allowed to watch this or anything now. Now you're not allowed to watch. You know? <laughs> yeah. the, now the TV's coming yeah, out. Now <laughs> you're done with anything. But at the same time, like she's letting me in her world. <laughs> right, right. Oh, this I is giving us opportunities to bond no, and communicate. No. It's really hard not to hold my comments back because things will happen. I'm like, oh my god! So, that's such the the. Yeah. I mean, you right. But you have to balance. You have to believe yeah. this is the the old wise version of yeah, you, right? Yeah, yeah. Like 25 year old reacts doesn't see that. Like you being a mature older dad, I feel the same way with the, like you bringing up with the with the Maxis thing. It's like I I know like I, what he's doing is dangerous. But yes, because he's he's uh, doesn't take a lot of risk in other areas. I want to allow it. Yeah. yeah, I want him to be able to yeah. to be able to stretch that. And like you know what you I have did to was know like, your kid. I just kind of like slid in to be there just in case because yeah. I want to put. I don't want him to me to f see me freak out oh don't do that now he's like overly cautious about everything yeah. so no that's the same thing but it her. was funny because hearing her like certain guys would come out and then like there's a couple of them that i kind of know her type a little bit right so they're kind of <laughs> handsome and she'd be like and, I'll, and they're like i'll make a comment like oh my god what a douchebag she's like no no actually i think he's he's more legit he seems like a more authentic <laughs> guy and so jessica and i picked up on this like thing right like Oh yeah, she the likes people it. you think are good looking. You want know I mean? yeah. <laughs> to start making justifications. Uh, yeah. No, no, he seems like a real, like a real guy. Dude, it, so. well, it, my youngest uh, ever, he's been on this new tear of like figuring out how specifically to make fun of me, uh, and it's it's hysterical. Like I, I, I didn't see it coming because it's like you know. You, you, you just don't think that at some point, like, it's going to land. Like, they always try and be funny. It's not really, like, funny. Mm -hmm. uh, but, like, it, so anytime I groan or whatever, he's picked up on that. Or anytime, like, I'm, like, yawning really loud and obnoxious or, like, any of the dad noises. Dad noises. So yeah. he'll start going around and he'll he'll be opening up something in the refrigerator and be like, ah! Yeah, just exaggerating. Ah! Yeah, he's, and it's to the <laughs> T. Like, exactly like what I sound like. <laughs> he'll tie his shoes and be like, ah! <laughs> I'm like, dude. <laughs> Why do we do you? that? <laughs> yeah. But then now it's like making me like self-conscious about yeah. that. I'm like, oh man, I do do that. You know? like, <laughs> As you get older, nailed it. Every you know? older guy, right? You sit down. Hmm. You gotta make yeah, it it is. <laughs> yeah. you gotta, all these you gotta, things. You gotta brace your core. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm excited. I just signed him up for uh, the uh, jujitsu class. Oh, did you? Just started and he's, oh. he's digging it. Oh, that's gonna be so good. Because we just stopped with with gymnastics and. So this he's is, gonna crush. Mark my words. This is one of those things. Mark yeah, my words. See. Within a year, he's gonna be like he's gonna crush. He with he his really gymnastic background so and his attitude. Yeah. He's gonna, and you know what's gonna be good about it is uh, you what you learn really well in jujitsu every time you go is how to lose mm -hmm. because you have to tap out. You don't let the guy break your arm. You have to tap out, which means you give up. Yeah. So it's really good. Uh, it's really, really good learning for a kid. It's too. it's I mean, because he comes in and, and these kids have already been training for two to three years. And it's like his first day. Yeah. And I'm like, I felt so like, oh, like I almost felt anxiety for him, right? Yeah. I'm like sitting there watching. I'm like, yeah. oh God, mm. you know, but it's just great. It's such a humbling thing to, to go from Dude. like, you're killing it 
in one sport and now you're like very much like below ground is he, zero. Do you see him excited about it? Is he excited about that challenge? Yeah, he or was he, scared. Like he was scared, but yeah. he got into it and he's like, he's like, you know, I, there's something here, dad. Like I really enjoyed that. Oh, okay. so That's so like, awesome. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we'll I, see. I have a, I'm going to make a statement. I want to hear what you guys think. I saw an article on this and I've been thinking about this and I want to hear what your, it's contra, it's a bit of controversial, but I think there's some truth to it. So somebody had written and talked about, there was a whole discussion about how mental illness is actually the manifestation of spiritual illness. So being sick spiritually turns into what we will label as mental illness. Uh, wow. now, now the people in the article or the people discussing it said there are physiologically based mental illness, but many of the common mental illnesses that we exhibit, depression, anxiety, you know, the, like, uh, like paranoias, things like that hmm. are because of a lack of spiritual health. Uh, now, is there, is from. there, I, uh, I, 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 man, I was like, wow, there, there could be some yeah. truth there. B borderline yeah. Tom Cruise, but yeah. So I, not that far. I, yeah. so it will be interesting to see if there's any correlation between people that have a spiritual practice. And is there a, a in order to get me to buy completely into that, I would need to see like statistics there on, Okay, people yeah. that have a spiritual practice Practicing. are significantly lower yeah. amount of mental yeah. illness. Yeah, people is that who true? yeah people who practice uh, so uh, so like practicing Christians, for example, the data on this, meaning they actually go to church, they actually you know practice it. They don't just claim to be far lower rates of anxiety, depression, substance abuse, and mental illness hmm. across the board. Um, so. Yeah, so it's an interesting thought, right? It's an interesting kind of discussion. Like, have we labeled spiritual illness as mental illness now because mm. it's now a part of medicine? You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, if you go to a psychiatrist or a doctor with depression, they they uh, oftentimes the remedy is something that causes a physiological change in how you feel. But is it really a, a solution? I would say maybe in some cases, maybe not. In other yeah. Cases. The other the other question I would ask for the other th challenge I would pose is that is it a direct correlation or is it just that people who don't have a spiritual practice are are also more likely to have they a have mental like structure illness too? too so right? that was also discussed. Okay. And, and again, in in if you look at uh, so they brought up the data on successful um, uh, people who are able to break drug addiction. Mm. Um, far more success when they adopt a spiritual practice. Well, now that's an obvious one because, I mean, they built the whole 12 steps off that's of right. it. That's right. I mean, that's all built off of that. That's right. That's so, right. I mean, that, that one's and a And so you more. see a lot more people uh, who move into these practices who were suffering from terrible Ill mental uh, anxiety, depression, suicide, um, or suicide, um, you know, suicidal thoughts who then adopt spiritual practices and come out and, and they're just like, oh yeah, it's it's made a huge difference. It is really interesting. It's how, an interesting thought, right? Well, it's also interesting to me hmm. too, how much um, this is a part of our society today and how, um, how much it wasn't just say 60, 70 years ago. Yeah. Like it's, and, and of course, uh, I know that we have, we're, we're, we're more connected. So we hear more of the stories and, and so with that, but it doesn't seem like it's like, oh, it's growing or it feels like it was like almost, almost non-existent, say 50, 60 years ago to like always talked about very, very close. There's everybody has somebody who's closely connected to them. That's suffering from some sort of a mental illness. Like that's a huge, in a, in a, in a very short period of time. Right. So Fifty the, years is not a real in, in the grand scheme. Yeah, so talk about a, like an illness that's now hundred percent. So in the data, they're like, oh, it's because we report it now because there's more. Awareness. Yeah, I don't. I don't buy that. No, I don't. I think part of it. Some, yeah, sure, but not sure, all of it. Sure, like uh, like kids. Okay, uh, I talked brought this up on a, on a previous episode. There was a U shape of happiness with age. Yeah. Young, you're happy. Middle age, your happiness drops, and as you get older, happiness comes up. That's changed now. It's now lower when you're a kid, and then it slowly goes up. As you get older. Yeah, so kids crazy. now suffer from depression, and anxiety, where that was almost unheard of in the past uh, for children. I think it's a combination of poor physical health. Poor physical health does contribute to poor mental health. Your brain is a part of your body. And, and it, what's funny about this is we know this about animals. Like if you have a dog that's biting the furniture and running in circles and biting its own tail, first question the vet's going to ask you is, do you let him outside? Do you take him for walks? Oh no, he's inside all day long watching TV. Well, get him outside. That'll mm -hmm. make a big difference. But we somehow think humans, uh, you know, that's not going to be true for a lot of us. So I think it's poor physical health, but I think there's also lack of purpose 
and yeah. meaning. Mm-hmm. And I think that comes from, you know, no mm-hmm. spiritual practice. Uh, yeah. Honestly, I think it's just like we're revisiting a lot of old um, practices, uh, uh, things that people used to just do automatically, like because of culture, you know, back in the day. And it's like we've moved away from a lot of, you know, traditional things. And it's like we start to go back and reevaluate like there's other benefits to it that I don't think were defined clearly uh, back then that I think that people have to really kind of reassess and, and see like, yes, there is you know, not just the fact that you get community, not just the fact that, um, you know, you're, you're kind of giving back a lot, but also too, it's like, there's all these other physiological benefits that you're receiving, you know, what's that side that what's that saying about fences? You should always, uh, uh, before tearing down a fence, yeah. find out why it was put up in the first place. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're notorious for that as a society, right? Just, Oh, that's a terrible. That's old. That's old science. That's old, whatever, <laughs> like onto the new, new way of thinking. The it's way like, I well, look at things now, cause that can be true. But that can all, that can definitely be true, right? But the way I look at things now is okay. That's been around for a long time. Why? Why? There's some wisdom there that we should maybe look into and see, and maybe we do need to change it. But let's not just look at something that's old, that's been practiced for thousands of years the hard by part about billions of people. The hard part about that, Sal, is like where does it? Where do you stop looking in? Like you know, some people would would argue like, oh, we know what we've looked into it, and this they is haven't. The, this think, is the this is the one benefit. I think. And that's gen- not, that's I think if enough. you genuinely look, then you'll get the answer. That's what I think. I think a lot of people don't look. They automatically right with like a true like a true open mind. Like like oh, let yes. me, oh, let's look into it and search to prove it right instead of trying to search to prove it wrong. That's right. That's yeah. right. Like let's look and see what's kind of going on and why so many people have said that, that these practices are valuable. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see why the data shows that. Because some people would say, well, practicing you know people who who, pra- who are practicing spirituality, um, maybe it's because they're just meeting with people on a regular basis in community, and maybe it's because they have a common goal together. Right. Sure, that could be a part of it. It could definitely be a part of it. Yeah. But then my challenge to them is, okay, well, what common goal could you f- meet with a bunch of people that would be as high as the one that they're doing? Right. Like, what would your common goal be that y'all like to work out? That's a good cult goal, but is it as high as what they're reaching for? Yeah. Probably not, right? Yeah. So definite value there. But yeah, I thought it was a really good discussion. Interesting Going thought. back and forth, yeah, yeah because then you look thought. at the data and you're like, wow, that's really interesting. Because then they had brought up other data and they I'm showed. I'm sure it caused all kinds of controversy. Is that it like, did, but yeah. but the data is like I was even back in the day when I was atheist. I, I, the data to me was hard to like I, overcome. Like I looked at, it, I'm like, okay, well these people who practice, they donate the most money, they donate the most time, they adopt the most children, they're less likely to be addicted to drugs, they're less likely to be depressed. They're like, so okay, there's yeah, something where, where's there. The downside. Yeah, yeah, there's something there. Right, yeah. so yeah. I don't know. Inter- hey, you, uh, you guys stayed at um, Sanctuary this weekend. How was yeah, that? Yeah, we we were able to break away just for like a a night. We just needed to kind of pause for a bit. We've been traveling a lot and like uh, doing a whole lot of things. So yeah, it was good. We we went there. We actually had to take the dogs with us, which I was kind of bummed about. But <laughs> they just. You know, it's my my Weimaraner is just just crazy energy. So it was it was like we couldn't get a dog sitter, but we brought him with us and yeah, chilled. And that was this weekend. Yeah, they so, remodeled it. They oh. did. Yeah, looks totally different. It's nice, way nicer. I, I was gonna say, I how do you say. like it? Because you've been to both, right before and after. It's one I of my favorite. They remodeled. Yeah, they, I well, got to get away with Jessica. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, you have to. It's such a great Bro, escape. Like, and favorite, it's not too far to favorite drive. Favorite spot, man. The only thing I didn't get to go to the cheese shop and do the kind of thing with that because uh, traffic was crazy, and so we just decided uh, to, to uh, you know keep it in Marina. But uh, yeah, usually we do that. We'll go to like. Um, Carmel and kind of make a whole thing out of it and go to that. Store. Traffic was horrible over there this bad. weekend. Wait, was I, it, I actually drove over there. I was driving over Hecker Pass, and I actually, after driving forty minutes, turned mm-hmm. around and came back home because it was just like I was going. Oh, that's the worst. Yeah, I was when already you give up. Yeah, that's the like, worst. Dude. Yeah, yeah, I had a because you of, feel like you just lost. Yeah, I had everything. a group of people that we were driving together, and I was going to take them all the way over there to have lunch. And uh, it was like horrible. It was just terrible. And we're like, oh my god, this is so bad. Let's go back to Morgan Hill. And we'll go eat there. Wow. Yeah. That's wow. How oh, I got to tell you guys. So you, so you were kind of is Half Moon Bay. That's not in that direction. Uh, opposite no, direction. Yeah. All opposite. You're north. south. How you're was north. the weather there? 
You know, it was all cloudy like Same. the whole time. Yeah, it was yeah. very uh, overcast. Yeah, overcast and, and it was like ninety degrees in where I'm at. And then <laughs> yeah. I draw it. So I love that. It's Sixty. So I love that. And misty. I, I love mean, that. it was cool because we just stayed in the hotel. You know, so the hack to Half Moon Bay and to Sanctuary, where it's like Marina kind of area, yeah. Monterey area, is actually the opposite of what you would think. That's why I love that place. Is because when nobody would think to go to the beach, that's the best time to go to the beach there. Oh, there, you mean when it's cold here? January, uh, like the last year that I was living out there, January 7th, okay, yeah. West, right in the middle of winter, okay, was the warmest, prettiest day in Monterey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The sunniest, sunniest, warmest, yeah. calmest, like, and nobody's there because it's like no one is thinking like, hey, it's January 7th. Yeah. Let's go to the beach. It's like you don't think to go there, but it's the, 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 like, the, it's like late October, November in Santa Cruz is like amazing. Oh, you yes. know, I just remembered. So because I was at the party, uh, I, you know how many of my family members are now? Because I told you guys my parents are using Ned regularly. Yeah. My grandfather, before he passed away, would use it before bed every night, which is funny. 90 year old Sicilian man. I have cousins and aunts now. Everybody's taking Ned. Everybody, because my parents were selling it for them. <laughs> they all they all take it. They all love it. They do the capsule, and they all take one or two, and that's it. Just one or two. So I never got on the capsule kick. I should, you know, and those are so much easier. It's the same yeah, thing. Yeah, I like the flavor. Yes. Yeah. Hits you the do? same. Yeah, yeah, I do. Like, of the oil. Yeah. I do, too. I actually don't. Well, I don't use it's like, yeah, it kind of tastes you like You use marijuana. it, out of all of us, you yeah. probably use it the most consistently. Mm -hmm. I see you use it all the time. I do. Are you still brain blend across the board? Brain blend for sure in the morning, and then I'll do the um, just the the regular fifteen hundred, um, you know, at night just to calm down a bit. Yeah, no. see, I rarely use the night one anymore. I use brain blend like crazy, but I just I only use the night one when I like really need like an extra. Literally, the, the magnesium is enough. Yeah, yeah, like that's an, that's enough for me to to help me sleep. Yeah, that, that product has been out of all everything they've created for me. That one has been Mellow has been the the biggest game changer. No, all sure. my all my uh, like uh, half my aunts, some of my cousins, they're all using the capsules, and they'll take one or two, which is a low dose because I'll take so four. Do you think part of it is like? Because I, I, I kind of feel like I have family members, too, that are like on this, too, and uh, not as big as you and as many as you, but I have the same thing. And I think there's also this kind of like being a guy who was in the marijuana space for so long. <laughs> Yeah. And everybody was so anti, freaked out, and then now the pendulum swung the other way. Now it's like the people that were so like, it's that's like kind of try it's, it. it's well, yeah, it's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, it's, the it's like entry, entry yes. level. Hey, uh, that's how I feel. It kind of is like that. Hey, you know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna look. I don't know if Ned will like that I say this, but if you take you take Ned, I'll take a bigger dose, like four capsules. Gives you kind of a feel like that. Uh, yeah. You yeah. feel, I mean, you feel it. Yeah. You definitely feel it. That's why I mean, I feel like, and imagine if you're somebody who never does any of that stuff and then you get introduced to it, you're kind of like, oh, this, well, feels, so I, this feels, well, kind no, of I, feels kind of edgy. Well, no, whenever my family <laughs> members take it, I, I warn them. I say, take a small dose because if you take too much, it's like you're going to feel, you're going to definitely yeah, feel like you're on something. It, it'll definitely 100%. affect yeah. you. So. It's super, I mean, you can't, you have, so to mild. me, you have to be like. Well, you're, these are people that, members of my family. Yeah. That, and that's my, that's yeah. my speculation is that you've got people who aren't doing any of that stuff and then now this is like their first introduction yeah, to yeah. it and it's kind of like so it's kind of cool it's kind of cool and effect, you know <laughs> yeah, i feel it and it feels effective and then it's also kind of cool i'm doing i'm doing cannabis stuff you know what i'm saying so i feel like that's yeah, what yeah there's a part I'm of my it like conservative that family's drug dealer with it. Yeah. So that's, that's what i feel yeah, like. yeah. they yeah. feel like super edgy that's why i think it, I, at least that's how i feel in my family because my family was all anti that stuff you know yeah. So to see them like try that is, I feel like that's part part of. But CBD, what are you talking about? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, yeah. totally. So I have a shout out. So Vicky cuts our hair on Mondays. We love her to death. She's absolutely amazing, and she knows somebody who is a huge fan of the show. Um, and wanted to we should say happy birthday, happy birthday to them. It's uh, Roya. Her name is Roya. Happy birthday, Roya. Manages uh, the fitness department at Equinox. Beverly Hills. So I guess they all listen to the show. So happy birthday. Thanks for listening to the show. Ah, that's cool. ButcherBox is a company that delivers grass-fed meat, uh, wild-caught fish, heritage pork to your door. So it comes in a big box. It's delicious, and it costs less than what you would get at the store because it eliminates middlemen. It's an incredible company. We've been with them for a long time. If you want to eat meat and you want to eat healthy meat, you got to go through ButcherBox. Go check them out. Go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump. And on that link, you'll get your choice of bone in chicken thighs, top sirloins or salmon included in your box for an entire year for free. And you get $20 off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Mason from Wisconsin. What's happening, Mason? How can we help you? What's up, dude? Morning, gentlemen. Thanks for taking the time to uh, answer my question. 
So my scenario is uh, I moved to Wisconsin and I got my NASM certification. I'm a school psychologist full time and my intent is to work as a personal trainer during the summers or maybe during the week. I've applied to many gyms in the area. And really what it's coming down to is they're not wanting to move forward because I don't have any experience. And presently, it looks as though I may be hired by a group training facility. And so my question to you, given um, how you guys talk about pros and cons of group training, should I move forward with this opportunity? And if I do, how to maximize it to ensure clients are uh, building strength and boosting their metabolism you you already have your nasm you said i do yes and the and what kind of gym did you go yeah, to were these big box gyms yeah, or was like, it like a 24 or a lifetime or a, a big big box yeah so one was an anytime fitness and then uh two were just independent local gyms well, anytime is a tiny little gym. That's yeah. a little, that's not a, that's not, a, we're talking co big commercial like yeah, a, LA Fitness, LA Fitness, 24 Hour Fitness, Bally. Lifetime Fitness. Does uh, exist? No. What else is it? What are all the other big massive chains all over Planet the country? Fitness, Planet yeah. Fitness. Those are all. Although like, I will say this, it's, it's pretty rare that a gym won't hire you because you don't have experience. That's not, actually not really a reason to not hire someone. I think it may be more cl closely related to what you said with your schedule. You only want to work in the summers and or like explain that. Oh, yeah. No one's going to hire you like that. Yeah. I mean, that, that's totally understandable um, given the time constraints. But yeah. It, given that I work from 730 to 330 um, you know, in the school system, my availability would only be then during the weekdays in the evening or during the summers full time. Yeah. So let me, since yeah, it's, uh, it's that. most of my career, this is what I did was interview and hire trainers. And one of the worst things that somebody could ever tell me in an interview is what they're willing to work. Like that was just like always a turnoff for me. I didn't care how educated, how smart, how great you came off. If you told me like, Hey Adam, I'm looking for a job. Um, I can only work these days and I'm only going to do this. And I, and I, I don't want to work in the summertime and I only like, if you start giving me all these restrictions of what you're willing to do and you're just trying to get your feet wet in the space, I would always pass on someone like that. Are just you, keeping it real, dude. That's not a great way to go through the interview Are process. you looking to do this uh, um, always alongside what you currently do or is this a career move for you at some point? I, I mean, I can certainly uh, perceive it being a career move. That's really what I would do and it wouldn't feel like work whereas the school psychologist position really feels like work yeah um fitness is my, my passion okay yeah so uh i could give you some tips on what would help during an interview process it sounds like you actually landed interviews is that that's correct i i've been a, yeah i've landed interviews um and like i said the current scenario is that it appears as i'll be hired at a group training facility i just I mean, is this really what I should be moving forward with? If this is my only opportunity. It's not a bad place to yeah, start. No, yeah. your foot's in the door. Yeah, it's not a bad place to start, and th that is actually the one place that will be flexible to a schedule yeah. like that because they can schedule group classes. They can say, right. "Oh, I can have you Monday, Wednesdays from five to eight. That works." Like building a trainer business, really tough to yeah. tell your boss or tell the guy who's running the and show. Your boss will get a feel for like how good of a worker you are and and how consistent you are with showing up and all that kind of stuff. I think that's the the concern uh you know with coming in with restrictions like well what you know what am i to expect with this so yeah between that because the other route i was going to say in those smaller boxes a lot of my friends like have done like uh mentorships first where they're behind you know another trainer and so they're kind of like you know working their way in that way without necessarily getting paid right away but it's 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 a foot in the door anytime you can get a foot in the door at this point because you're just brand new I think is a good way to go. Yeah. The other thing you could possibly do would be to try to uh, start the process of building an online coaching business, but you would want to work with a company like NCI to kind of learn how to do that and slowly do that over time. Cause the flexibility with an online coaching uh, business is obviously much greater um, because it's all online. It's all virtual. Um, but if you want to go back to the gyms and try and get hired, you know, I'll, I, I tell people this all the time. You want to go in and present the attitude that um, I'm here to learn. I'm here to, to build my business. I'll do whatever it takes. Uh, I like to sell training. That's like if you tell somebody, I want to sell training, you tell a manager that, that's like music to their ears because that's what they're looking for. And a lot of gyms, especially big box gyms, 
are actually uh, short trainers. They're looking for more trainers. But if you open the interview with, hey, I do this, I can only do that, it's like right away they're going to shut everything down. Mm -hmm. But if you come in and say, look, here's the deal. I want to work evenings. I love to sell training. I love fitness. I want to get in here. I want to make it happen. I want to learn. I'll learn anything. I'll do whatever you tell me to do. Yeah. I'm just very eager to get started. That energy, typically a general manager or manager hears and feels that energy. They'll hire you probably right on the spot. I, I would sure. share my goal is to do this full time. I'm currently limited because I have to pay the bills. And so I'm doing this right now, but I'll do whatever it takes to do this full time. So if that means I got to come and work late hours after I get like, that's a better way to present your schedule than to be like what some people would do to me, which is, well, I can only work these days and I can do these days. And it's like when someone starts telling me stuff like that, when I was interviewing them, it was always like a turnoff, like, oh, it's okay. Yeah. There's a million other kids right behind this person that's willing to grind all day long that I would rather teach and figure it out. Now, the, the online coaching route, Mason, have you considered anything like that? I have, but given that I'm a, I would be a new trainer, I really want to get that in-person experience. So that's what's, um, you know, held me back from moving forward that route. So here's why I think you you have some experience. You do have a background in uh, therapy and psychology, yeah. which is actually Correct, ex yeah. Yeah, very, very valuable yeah. for online coaching. Extreme, is, I mean, if most of the work you do online coaching, it revolves around nutrition and behavior change. So you're not really doing lots of, and you, you wouldn't anyway, but typically do lots of exercise uh, you know, advice because you're not training them in person. Um, I think that you have some value there and I would present myself as such, you know, somebody with a background in psychology, human behavior, and I coach you on changing behaviors and change and, and working with your diet. Like you do have some experience with that. In fact, I would say somebody with a background in psychology and working with, cause that's what you do, right? You work with people. I mean, you work with kids now, but I mean, you learn how to help people through behavior change and, and how the human psyche works. It's extremely valuable with online coaching. So that's, that's why I said, Maybe consider that route. The, the thing you would need to learn is how to build that business. Uh, NCI is a great company that could teach you that. Um, we have a course that uh, obviously I'm, I think is phenomenal that can help you with that as well. But that might be something else to even consider. Yeah, I like uh, in this situation, I do like, you know, getting your foot in the door in a group place, you know, a, a F45 and Orange Theory. This, this makes sense. Uh, where you're currently at as a trainer coach. And, and it's actually a really nice way to ease your way into like one-on-one -on -one training because it's not one-on-one. -on -one. You know, you get a whole group. You have, yeah. normally they have the format laid out for you. And so you're going to start to see some of the challenges and questions. And so it's a lot easier place for the average person to start. And it, because of your schedule, it is a it is a good place potentially to get in there and then to move from there. But definitely take Sal's advice and go through our stuff. If you haven't gone through our free three-day training, make sure you take advantage of that. I've done that. Thank you. Yeah, okay, that was very valuable. Okay, good. Okay, good. 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 There you go. Yep. All right, man. All right, John. All right, yeah, nice. I think I'll work on uh, the marketing uh, pitch for myself and how I want to present that, and I'll move forward with the group training. I appreciate yeah. your advice. You got right. it, brother. All good right, luck. Nice. Yeah, man. All right, take care. Thank you. I yeah. used to hate that. Oh, was That's like, a no. Right away. The first thing you <laughs> tell was, me was, is, if, even if it's this, yo, oh yeah, oh, you know, before we get started, I do have a vacation coming up and whatever. I'm already, <laughs> uh, Yeah, I know. <laughs> or, uh, yeah, yeah, I want, or tell me, uh, I, I want to work nine to five, yeah, uh, yeah. Monday through Thursday. Or yeah, like, get you, out of my you office. start telling me like how you were like, they're determining. And everything. a lot of, yeah. <laughs> and I understand from that person's perspective, right? Like totally reasonable. The guy has got a, he has to, support himself but i don't know if he's got a family or not but i mean he's got bills he's got a yeah, career but don't go there until you're yeah, well and don't don't say that like that yeah, there's yeah. a hold so, your cards there's a way okay <laughs> there's a way to communicate that i can't work <laughs> during the week at this time because i have another job than to say to to present it in a way of like i can only go do this it's like you said said hey yeah. i i, I really want to move into the training uh field i went out and i got my national cert on my own time i currently work as a psychologist at school right now i have a lot of bills that i have to pay so i can't completely quit and then jump all in training but i want to do this really bad yeah. is there some time i can work and after these yeah. hours where I can very different, right. I could prove to you yeah. how mad I want to do this. Like, man, you yeah. say that to me yeah. now. I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm gonna give this yeah. guy a shot. I want to yeah. earn enough uh, income. So that way now this can passion yes. of mine yeah. can take over. What do I got to do? I really want to get there. Yeah. Yeah. What do I got to do? Yeah. What do I got to do? Like, tell me like it's that. It's also, it's also this, like uh, managers with any experience, gym managers with any experience, hire trainers based off of character and personality. It's just a fact. 
And if you go in there taking things away, dead with your energy, uh, maybe I'll, whatever, I don't care what your resume says. I don't care how many certs you, you have. This, or, not this. I don't yeah. care about that. You know, I, most my most successful trainers were trainers that came in with no cert. Yeah. They sat down with me. I love their energy. I used to recruit people. I recruited yeah. people from other places because I liked their energy so much. And I'd tell them, go get certified. I think I want to hire you. And they were successful. So it's the it's the it's the energy, it's the character, it's the personality, and it's letting the manager know like it's, I'm here to make this happen. Listen, the interview the interview process is you're selling yourself. Yeah, of I, course. I mean, and I mean, Mason, you're 100%. a psychology guy. You should get this better than anybody. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, and the psychology of going into the interview is you are presenting and selling yourself. So think about that from the other other person sitting across the table from you. Like, how do I want to sell myself? I want to sell myself as someone hungry, determined, willing to work long hours. Like, I want to. That's what I want to sell. And yet, I also recognize that I. Have have to do this other job right now to pay the bills. So how do I present that in a way that excites by, the, the by, person across the screen? By the way, this this presenting yourself in this way, I think is is universal. I think 100%. Any job, any job. I got listen, I got hired with zero banking experience. Zero. I had no banking experience, no finance, nothing. I got hired as a premier banker with none of that stuff because I got in with an interview and I sold myself. And they literally said, "This is we're crazy for hiring you, <laughs> but we like your interview. I just had this conversation literally yesterday with my cousin who's in the middle of this like career shift right now. He went and got this certification in how to do those really expensive like marble type looking floors. And he wants to go and in that field. He doesn't have a bunch of leads. So I told him, I said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go down to Los Gatos luxury car uh, uh, place the dealership. And I want you to go get a job there. He said, well, what if they're not hiring? I said, listen, this is how I want you to walk in. You walk in there and you tell the guy who owns the place or makes the general manager, who makes the decision, say, I want to work here. And when he tells you we're not hiring, you say, I'll do anything. I'll clean the toilets. I'll wash the cars at night. What do I got to do, I gotta do to get a job here? A good manager is not going to say he's, no. I said, listen, if somebody walked into me like that, I said, I'm, I'll find a position for that character. Yeah. Like, So go in there. And then that's step one. Then step two is to show your character. You're the guy who shows up before everybody. You stay later, everybody. You work hard and you put your and then and then watch what opens up for you. Mm -hmm. Then you get an opportunity to maybe get a real position that's paying really good money. And then you start to meet the contacts and the leads that potentially would actually spend fifty thousand dollars on a floor for cars and stuff like that. Like that's how I would think. And he was just like, oh, well, yeah, this and I, I might like, just oh, stay no. home and scroll and wait till something happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just you know I send out a bunch of digital uh, re re resumes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Not going to happen. Our next caller is Katie from Massachusetts. Hi, Katie. Hello, hello. Hi, guys. How, How can doing? we help you? How's it going? Good. Uh, all right. First off, I just want to say thank you so much for having me on. I've been a listener for about a year and a half. I um, was introduced to you guys through my boyfriend, who is a longtime listener. Awesome. Okay. Very cool. Good keeper. Guy. He's a keeper. I'm going to start with my question. I'm just going to read it off as I wrote it. Um, so a little bit of background, I'm 26 and I started weightlifting about a year and a half ago. Um, I started eating meat about a year and a half ago at the same time. Um, and I've seen pretty major changes since then. Um, five foot seven and I weigh about 135 pounds. Um, the past two or three months I've been having major sleep issues. I've always been a good sleeper and never experienced this before. Previously, I was going to bed around 9, getting up around 5.30, 5.45. And lately, I've been going to bed around 8.30 to 9 and getting up or can't get out of bed until 7. Um, I've been waking up and snoozing my alarm or turning it off completely. My body feels physically tired when the alarm goes off, almost achy. I started taking a magnesium drink supplement that would help um, or that I thought would help as well as vitamin D in the morning but I haven't really seen any improvement. I'm currently running MAPS Aesthetic, and this week I cut down by doing one less set of every exercise. My body feels a little bit better, but the sleep issue is still persisting. Uh, previously, I've run MAPS Anabolic, MAPS 15 Advanced, and at home, and MAPS Anywhere. Curious. Any advice on what might be going on? Curious mm. to what else might be going on in your life. Uh, you got, uh, tell me about yeah, what, work. What's your stress bucket look like? Yeah, work and other stuff that's that's going on in your life. Any right changes. Now. In other words, any changes in your lifestyle uh, right around the time your sleep started doing this? Uh, nothing super specific I can think of. Uh, work was definitely a little bit on the busier side. And I was gearing up for a move, which happened about two weeks ago. Uh, moving in with my boyfriend, but... 
That's, that's kinda, about it. That's how pretty, long? That's a pretty big deal. How long has the sleep uh, issue been happening? Uh, I'd say it is bad for like about two months, maybe. Okay. So uh, typically, uh, so you're young, right? So at your age, you typically wouldn't see this, um, except for one of the more common um, side effects of overtraining is sleep issues. I see that you're doing MAPS Aesthetic. MAPS Aesthetic is just bottom line, too much volume for most people. Um, are you doing anything on top of it? Walking like 10 to 12 K steps a day. Yeah. So, so sleep issues where you just feel like you, you, either you keep waking up throughout the night or you don't feel rested is a very, very common side effect of just doing too much, too much with your workouts, too much volume, too much intensity. Yeah. Now, you know, that's, that's barring there's any changes in medications, any nutrient deficiencies, um, or maybe overuse of stimulants. But if, if, if none of those are happening for you, it's almost always someone your age, it's it, working out. It's almost always you're just overdoing it. You're just easy, overtraining. Easy way to check that is yeah. you've already ran MAPS 15 yeah. before. You could switch back to MAPS 15. It should instantly make a difference. And if it doesn't, then we're probably diving into other stuff. Did you change anything too about like your workout time? Do you work out the same time? Are you, are you an evening, an afternoon, morning person? When do you normally lift? Yeah, same time every day, right when I get up. Um, so usually right around six in the morning. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I would do. I did. Uh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish. So I ended up starting um, Muscle Mommy when that came out, and I'm on week three, um, and I feel much better since I've started doing that. Is your sleep getting better? I'd say it's getting better. It's not quite like back to normal yet, but it's definitely yeah. better. You were overtrained. Yeah. Very, very, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very classic. When you're overtrained, there's a lot of signs and symptoms of that. One of them is excessive fatigue, uh, sleep disturbances. You'll feel libido changes, cravings, hot and cold intolerance. Like all of a sudden, you know, you feel more cold than you normally would or, or cold and sweaty might be another one. Um, and then when you're in that state, reducing volume can still take a while for your body to get back to normal because you're below baseline. If you want to get back to baseline faster, you need to work, like literally take time off. Like a week off. Yeah. So like a week off of all exercise or two weeks off all exercise and then get back on muscle mommy. And you should notice within four or five days of, of no lifting improvements in your sleep. You're already noticing improvements now by reducing the volume, um, yeah. which, which really tells me that my hunch was, was probably right. You were just overtrained. Okay. I'm actually um, in Ireland right now on a trip uh, for the week. So maybe this would be yeah. perfect time. Perfect timing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Totally. Jump back week four when I get back. Totally. Yeah. Sleep. A lot of people don't realize that sleep disturbances and challenges is one of the first symptoms of just overtraining. We say too much stress, right? Oh, if you have poor sleep, it could be due to too much stress. Well, exercise is a stress as well. It doesn't just have to be relationship stress or, or yeah. work stress. Although I wouldn't discount that. You know, if you also if you said that's fairly recent, right? You have to share a room now and like your whole environment has completely shifted and you're, you know, th this is a big uh, adjustment for you. So, you know, I wouldn't discount that. Could either. be all compounded. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Also, kind of a perfect form. Also keep in mind too, I don't know if you are doing this or not, but what happens too is this cycle of, oh, I'm not sleeping very well. I'm tired in the morning. So then I start to ramp up my caffeine intake. And so that could exacerbate this whole situation too. So if you also had a certain amount that you used to take, and now because you feel like you're dragging ass, you're taking even more to help yeah. you out. A lot of times that will actually end up affecting the sleep even worse mm -hmm. because now you're having a yeah. hard time. So I don't know if that's changed at all for you too. Yeah, maybe a little bit. I used to be kind of a coffee like first thing in the morning but only on the weekends person mm -hmm. um and i would say it's increased a little bit lately the other morning i was actually so tired i had i had matcha right when i woke up and then at like seven and then at like 8 30 i was just still feeling like exhausted even after having like gone for a walk and whatnot um so i ended up getting a coffee so i'm sure that maybe made it a little bit worse, yeah. like you said. Yeah, take this week off. And then when you get home, I would take a little bit more time to adjust to the time change. 
and then jump yeah. back on jump back on muscle mommy. Any any value sell on her taking like an adaptogen or something like that, like a red I mean, juice like, or an ashwagandha? That's like or taking anything? yeah, but but that's like taking a, a bucket that's overflowing with water and then using like a spoon. No, I don't mean in, in like just that. I mean with the advice that we're saying, if you do all the things sure. we're saying, take the week of all plus do that. It, is it, it could if you're noticing like big hormonal changes and stuff, you could add something like ashwagandha. I just I, it's just not going to replace the time off though, um, you know for sure. Okay. So biggest thing is going to be the the rest period. Oh yeah. I would take, I'd take a week or two off then they get muscle. Mommy's got really good, appropriate volume for most people. Maps aesthetic yeah. is on the upper end yeah, of volume. And most sure. people overtrain in a maps uh, aesthetic tile, uh, style workout. I mean, it's a really easy way to check this. I mean, you should notice a difference pretty quickly. I mean, if you take a, if you actually take a full week off of, of working out, um, you know, sometimes even with days, you start to see an improvement yep. and definitely for sure within a week or two, you're definitely going to see a difference. So you should, totally. should notice that. And if it's not, then we have to look somewhere else. Okay. Yep. All, right. All right. Thank you guys. All right. Sounds you good. It. You got it. Have right, fun Katie. over there. Thank you so much. No problem. Right. Bye. Yeah, that's a big one. You know, even when you look at the, the top high trained athletes, these are genetic you know, genetically gifted individuals, they train in seasons. They have an in season, they have mm -hmm. an off season. When people get really into working out, they don't give themselves an off season. Yeah. In most athletes, the off season is longer than the season itself. So what people tend to do is they get into working out and it's always in season, always in season, push, 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 push. Now maps aesthetic. If you're fit and healthy, you can run a cycle of it, but then get out and give yourself uh, long periods of much lower volume. But people tend to get stuck in that yeah. high volume phase and then it's your sleep. And if you look at even, again, you look at like bodybuilders and strength athletes that that will even push it a little bit, what do they all do? They all take naps. Yep. They sleep for eight or nine hours. Mm -hmm. Then they take Their like an hour or two hours around it. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, also, you're also comparing to, you know, a small percentage of people too exactly. that are already genetic anomalies. So you yep. figure like- And they're on anabolic you know, yeah. steroids so, and all that stuff. No, 100%. I mean- the cool part about this is uh, hopefully for the listeners that are listening right now that it may have the same issues, like it's a really easy thing to test. I mean, and that's why I love to, this is also why I think like everybody should have like a MAPS 15 on the back burner. Like you could have a program like that. And if you start to notice symptoms right. like this, you shift over to a program like that for a few weeks and should notice a significant difference. That's always, I mean, yeah. this is how I do it, right? So this is how I use that. It's like, if I'm in a rhythm and I'm training really good and hard and consistent, and I notice some of these symptoms, I'll like, oh, you know what? This week, I'm going to kind of go back to like a yep. MAPS 15 protocol. And if I see pot, like I see strength gains, I see sleep better. It's like, oh, obviously I was overreaching. The next caller is Vincent from Ohio. What's up, Vinny? How can we help Yo, you? What's, what's going on, guys? What's going on, man? All right. So uh, I've been on before, so I appreciate you guys having me back. I remember. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. Um, before I get into it, has anybody ever told you guys that the four of you are like the Ninja Turtles? Wow. <laughs> All right. Let's who's so, who. Let's hear who's who. You. I, I bet you if you guys took about it. Uh, took a second and thought about it. You'd be able to figure it out. Don so, Donatello, uh, yeah. Splinter. Splinter. Uh, <laughs> Raphael, Michelangelo. Michelangelo, bro. Oh, come is, no. Yeah, Michelangelo is absolutely just Am I Leonardo dude. then? Who am I? What am I? Leon Leonardo is Sal. He's, you know, he's oh, okay. like the leader of the group there. He's got that, you know, sort of, uh, you know, Bushido type uh, Zen mindset. Oh, Bushido. <laughs> Adam, <laughs> so Adam you are absolutely <laughs> Raphael. Okay, I'm Raphael. Adam, okay. you are. I don't know why you're not thinking you're Raphael. You okay. got that kind yeah, of the, the sarcastic yeah, guy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fair. You heard his feelings. That's fair. Yeah, and then and then Doug's, Doug's Donatello. He's the he's the guy in the chair. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Smart guy. I thought he was Splinter. Yeah, that's yeah, why I thought he was Splinter kind of too. I, mean, <laughs> I thought Splinter he was. Splinter. I thought Adam was Smart. Shredder. <laughs> 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 he's Bebop. <laughs> All right, All right, go for it. All right, Vincent. Let's, right, let's, yeah. let's hear. Let's hear. Let's hear. Side cool. cool. Thank you, guys. So basically, the question breaks down. I'll just kind of say, um, I cold plunge daily, every single morning, first thing out of bed, into the cold plunge religiously. Um, and then I also do the sauna in the evening. So I work out in the evening and then I do the sauna in the evening after that. And I've been doing this for about 10 months now. Don't miss a day. Stick to it. Um, enjoy it for the most part. And on an episode one time, I, you know, you guys talk about it a lot. Shout out to, to plunge. I actually have a plunge. So that I use that. And uh, Justin made a comment. At, it was kind of an off comedy. He said, nobody does this every day. Basically, you'd have to be some kind of psychopath <laughs> to do this every single day. Yeah. Um, 
And it is something I do every day. So I thought about it and I, I thought maybe I shouldn't be. Um, should I be cycling this in some way, a couple weeks on, a week or two off, a couple days on, a couple days off? Um, very much like I do my workout pro program. So there's some other info in there if you guys want to get into that. But but that's the the nuts and bolts of the question. Technically, um, I, li I like yeah, what you're I mean, doing. I, I mean, like what you're doing. They're both a stress on the body. Technically, that's yeah. what causes the adaptation. As long as you manage it well. That's right. So so the cold. The reason why cold therapy and hot therapy or heat therapy are beneficial for the body is because they're stresses. So they're stressors. And they cause adaptations that are beneficial. So technically, you can overdo them like any stressor. But the only the only way to know if you're overdoing it is that I'd have to ask you how you're feeling. Are you noticing benefits? Is it? Are you noticing that you can stay in the that the cold now is becoming more intolerable? That it's affecting your sleep? Um, how do your workouts feel? Like it, it, so that that would tell us if you need a break or not. It would be if your body feels a little overwhelmed. If it doesn't, you feel good and you feel healthy. You're getting good sleep. Then you're fine. Yes, yeah, so I think sleep is has always been an issue for me, and I know that's you know one of the things you guys preach upon, and that's kind of the small the the piece of the puzzle that I struggle with the most, and it's not because of the plunges I have it and the sauna I haven't seen it change, but that's one of the main reasons that I started doing it is because the research said that you know in the evening you want your body to be colder, so you do the sauna, it heats up your outer shell, and then your inside core has to respond to that and get cooler, so it's supposed to help you kind of get into that sort of state a little bit earlier than uh, normal so that when you lay down you know you're already in that cold state and you don't have to figure it out but other than that my my workouts are great um i'm not intolerant to the cold in fact i'm very much more tolerant i mean i'm sitting in you know 35 degree water every single morning for four to five minutes and just kind of getting out because i don't want to do more than that how do you how is your sleep any better or worse has it changed no, no change. Yeah. Okay. I, I would say, like I said, it, it hasn't been really affected by it. How, how are you, uh, Vincent with the uh, caffeine? I drink zero caffeine. Oh, wow. Awesome. Oh, wow. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Good for you, dude. Have you, uh, I mean, you, you've already invested in things like cold plunge sauna, stuff like that. Have you dabbled with the idea of messing with an eight sleep? I mean, that's like, of all, of all the, the next of all the things that w that have affected my sleep, I'd say the 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 most or the least uh, expensive and the best was first magnesium that made a huge difference for me, and then I'd say the the second would probably be eight sleep. And eight sleep obviously is more of an investment, but boy is that a that's a game changer, man. Yeah. That thing is that control and the AI that it adapts to you. So when you as you change hot, cold, whatever, it's moving for you to get the most optimal sleep. So once you kind of once you set it and it figures you out after a couple of weeks, you'll never get in your bed and ever feel too hot or too cold ever again. Yeah. It's like puts you at the perfect temperature forever. It's I, the coolest thing ever. There's some other stuff you wrote in your question too, if you don't mind. Do you mind if I bring up some of the stuff you said in your question? Because I have some No, you can go ahead. Like I said, I just didn't want to go okay. too long before it's, I got to the question. It says, uh, you wrote in your question here that you're routine driven and that you've been professionally diagnosed with OCD. Has Correct. this affected that positively or negatively? Or 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 maybe if to ask differently, if your plunge was taken away from you and your sauna was taken away from you, does that cause a great deal of stress mentally for you? Yes. Okay. Then I think you should take some time off. Okay. Because <laughs> I want to cause stress. No, <laughs> not because I want to be. It, that's what it sounds like. Well, hey, I, hey look, does it cause stress if I take it away? Oh, I'm going to go ahead and take it well, away. No, no, no. That tells me that you, this, this is more, stress. this, this has become an OCD uh, right, type right, behavior. Right, right. Instead of something that's so helpful. You, you might want to take some time off uh, intermittently because the, you're, you might be developing a behavior around yeah. uh, this that's going to cause you, so you don't have dependency some anymore. harm down the, yeah, down the line. And, and what ends up happening, you know, this better than, than I do probably is we tend to justify OCD behaviors. And so we'll ignore any potential negatives that may be occurring due to those behaviors because we like the behavior so much. So it might be a good idea to take a day or two off a week at the very least. Okay. So that's a tough one. And, and, and I'll just say why, because, um, and not no disrespect to anybody, not in this panel, but just in general, I, I don't have like the, the fun OCD where it's like, Oh, I need, I have a routine and I need my shoes to match my shirt. It's, it's the legitimate OCD where if I don't do certain things, I can't leave the house that day because something wow. that's going to happen. Yeah. Wow. Got it. Wow. Okay. So um, obviously medication is involved and this is the, the plunge and the sauna are some things that I've heard have some benefits for mental health and stuff like that. Has so, it helped you? Say it again. I'm has, sorry. Is it helping you then? Um, 
I think it helps a little bit with like anxiety and things like that. But like okay. you said, I haven't taken the time off to see if this is something that I could disconnect from and not have that happen. Yeah, um, yeah I, I, I think can I, try if that's the recommendation. Well, I, yeah, I'm, I'm just not just to take the other side of what mm. Sal said, because it's not necessarily I disagree, but I definitely think this is a, a therapist question. This is like something I probably would ask my therapist around. If, yeah. you're, if you're diagnosed like this seriously, and like you said, you know, uh, that how, how big of a deal it is for you, I don't think I would give you the advice of like, Hey, let's just quit this for a little bit because I don't want to. I don't want to set you back like that. And I, there is like the cold plunge. One of the best things, like, and I imagine somebody who battles with OCD or anxiety, uh, the ability to calm yourself in that mm -hmm. cold water, uh, I would think, is a very uh, positive thing for you. Even though maybe it's not making your sleep much better or not, I think just the ability for you to calm yourself yeah. by breathing is a incredibly. Do you have a breathing good practice? Do you have a Wim Hof protocol you do with this? I, I do like the square breathing uh -huh. um, and I do that in the plunge and I also do it in the sauna. The, the sauna is terrible for me. I'm a, I'm a cold person. I love the cold. Um, it's more difficult for me to stay in the sauna. So I absolutely oh, wow. have to do that breathing <laughs> method to be in there. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. I think what Adam said is a good idea. Yeah, I would ask your right. uh, professional, yeah. Hey, you know, I do this every day. Uh, I want to, you know, make sure. What do you think if I had to take a break or not? From a physiological standpoint, physically, if you don't see it overstressing your body, or if you're not showing any signs or symptoms of overtraining, overstress, then you're then you're probably okay. I yeah, I I don't see anything like that, and I I follow your guys' programs. I put that in there, you know, not not, but as a pat on your back, it, exclusively, I've been following Maps programs for the past several years now. I kind of cycle through them, um, so I have a decent amount. So I mean, I know you guys build them, so that it's not over stressful on the body yeah. if you fall in the right way. Um, but I don't like take time in between them. I go, you know, from one into the next. Um, but again, I do cycle them. I'm not just hitting the same program. Yeah, no, you're That's okay. totally fine. You're yeah. okay. That's yeah. how they're, and you don't necessarily have to take it. We normally have to no. tell people to take them off when they're doing more than that, or they got all this other crazy stress. But I do, I would, uh, I don't know uh, how often, or if you do talk to a therapist at all, but uh, with, yeah. about, okay, so I would love to hear what they have to say, because this is a, a unique question for me. And I haven't actually came across uh someone with your specific condition who's also doing sauna and cold plunge, I'd love to hear what the therapist say. So whatever they say, I'd love to hear their feedback. So if you could email back or like get back in touch with us, Vincent, I'm curious to just in case I run across this again. Uh, so I have, I'm, I'm better uh, suited to answer it because I think, I do think Sal's advice 99% of the time is spot on, but because you have a very special, unique case, uh, I would, I, I would want to clear it by them anyway. Yeah. 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 I'd like to hear what they, I'd like Let's to hear their the professional there. opinion on, cause here's the deal. It, with OCD, uh, and even though we're doing something quote unquote healthy, anything done too much can be unhealthy, right? That could be exercise right. could be that way. Dieting can be that way. Absolutely. Cold plunge and sauna could absolutely be that way too. And so, you know, it, it is, uh, so Sal's advice it, it is obvious that that we go, Hey, let's, let's pull back. Let's see if it, you see positive benefits uh, physiologically, but because we're dealing with a special condition like OCD, I don't think I would give that advice without hearing from them just because I don't want to spiral you out of control over something that we didn't necessarily need to adjust. Okay. Yeah, I can, I can definitely do that. They know, they know that I do it, but I haven't really got into the nitty gritty details, but I'll specifically ask the questions, you know, that, that you guys are bringing up. If I pull away from that, is that going to be, you know, an issue for me? Awesome. Yeah. Eventually, eventually I'd like to not be on medicine at all because I'm looking for these different ways to, to not, you know, get my sleep better, do the plunge for my mental, do the, you know what I mean? Stuff yeah. like that. That's why I work out. That's why I don't do caffeine. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do anything. So oh, good for you. Yeah, you, have, you have a spiritual yeah. practice, Vinny? Um, not nothing that I would, uh, center on, you know, a specific definition. Um, so no. All right. I, I you know, I would look, look into that. I, uh, um, you, you might have some success with helping yourself peel away from some of the anxieties that accompany, um, you know, certain behaviors or whatever. Yeah. So I wouldn't call it spiritual, but I'm, I'm into stoicism. Um, I have several books that I read and awesome. when I'm That's in the corner to help yeah. say it again. That's a good practice. Stoicism is, is a, is a great okay. way to do that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I have books that I read. I have a daily um, Stoic book that I look at every morning, and then I have a 
some kind of affirmations, I guess, that are quotes from, you know, the, the, the major Stoics that I listen in my ears when I'm in the sauna. So it's kind of like a meditation for me, but again, that's not a, you know, a technical spiritual. That's right. I like, it's, yeah, it's, that's, it's, that counts. Yeah. 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 Good. I, and the, if you do make an investment, eight sleep, bro. Cause I'd love to hear your, yeah. Yeah. If you buy anything else or do anything else investment wise for yourself, I think eight sleep would be really cool to, to hear how that, that impacts you. Especially it's going to happen because it's, it's next on the list, man. I've, I've done Felix Gray. I do, you know, LMNT. I do Caldera. I bought the plunge. Um, I'm probably missing one or two, but yeah, tell your, tell your sponsors, you guys are doing your job. <laughs> yeah, out yeah. There. All right. Appreciate v- it. Vinny, Vinny's keeping our business. Yeah. Thanks. thanks <laughs> yeah, man. Exactly. Awesome. Appreciate that. Thanks man. man. I appreciate your help guys. Thank you so much. You got it brother. All right. All right. Bye. Michelangelo out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they actually, there's, uh, I read some articles on cold plunge specifically, uh, having potential addictive properties for some people. Sure. Yeah. Because sure. of the catapult. And in the endorphin, yeah, the endorphin rush yeah. from that. A hundred percent. I could see that. Great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's why I get where you went with the advice, but because of his crippling OCD. No, no, you got to ask. Dude, yeah. That's yeah, like, I don't, I don't yeah. want to. You guys ever trained somebody with like crippling OCD? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah it's, it was really yeah, yeah. tough. Yeah, yeah. I had to work with a lot of nuanced things and like, you know, really late uh, appointments and, you know, yeah. just had a lot of uh, work. That's why I was kind of quick specific. to kind of come the other direction just because I have trained OCD people, although I've never had this specific thing. Like I, I never had my OCD client addicted to plunging and, and sauna yeah and if they were i'm not i don't know if i would try and advise i think i'd probably go hey tell your therapist to call me <laughs> so we can talk because uh i know why sal's pushing you that direction because it makes yeah. logical yeah. sense for the average person but somebody who's got you know ocd so bad they won't leave the house if he doesn't follow well, routine, right? yeah my client used to like have to go back and check whether their door was locked yeah a like, million like times like three times yeah, yeah. just constantly yeah. even yeah. when we were at the gym i don't i think i forgot yeah and probably you didn't <laughs> most likely you didn't our next caller is megan from iowa hi megan how can we help you hi um, so I wanted to say thank you, like everybody always does. Um, and then my question is related to shoulder workouts. Um, so a little bit about me. I have a high stress job and I tend to be a little more high strung, um, just in general. So when I do like a true shoulder workout, um, anything that I really feel like in my traps or kind of that like sternocleidomastoid, uh, afterwards I get horrible headaches just from the tension. Um, is there anything, like, do you have any tips? Is there anything, um, I can do? I want that big, beautiful, like shoulder look without the pain, ideally. Yeah. This is actually not super uncommon. Okay. So when you look at the whole, the whole shoulder complex and the shoulder girdle, um, it's a very complex joint. There's a lot of, a lot of moving parts there. And if there's an instability in one place, other places or other areas have to pick up the slack to create stability. It's very common for somebody to have tight, uh, you know, trap muscles or neck muscles or feel the tension in the back of the head. Anytime to try, mm-hmm. try and do a shoulder exercise because their shoulder girdle is trying to stabilize with those muscles that shrug. So I can even, I bet you if I had, if I had you try to pull your shoulders back, it would probably look more like a shrug because these muscles are probably always tight. Like right now, if somebody were push on those muscles in the yeah, trap area, fighting it. Would you feel? Would it feel like? Oh, that feels really good. If somebody just came and pushed on or them, or hurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I always have like a knot like right above my scapula. Yeah, in mm-hmm. between like the top of my shoulder and my scapula in the back. Okay. Yeah. So we have to work on getting the, the strengthening the muscles that bring the shoulder blades back and down, back and down, not up, but back and down. So uh, if you if you were to do, for example, a band row. You'd want to pull the band, pull the shoulders back like you're trying to pinch a, a pencil in between your shoulder blades, but also simultaneously try to put your shoulder blades in your back pockets. You have to be able to deactivate those upper uh, back muscles when you're doing that. Slowly over time, you'll be able to press overhead while maintaining that. But right now, if I have you lift your arm overhead, almost inevitably, you're probably shrugging um, your shoulders. And so that's what's happening. So Deep tissue massage and correctional exercise would be the way to go. And what that might look like is not doing much of any shoulder specific exercises for the time being until you get really good at that, like that, you know, retracting and depressing the shoulders and things like the seated row or the band pull-aparts, like getting really good at that. And then 
when we decide to reintroduce shoulder. So if you're a client of mine, I'd first, we take a break off of it for a while. I'd really focus on that movement to where you feel really good and comfortable with retracting, depressing the shoulders. Then as we start to feel like, okay, I feel like I'm getting better and we're getting relief here. Okay, let's start to introduce shoulders. But before we introduce it, I'm always gonna prime your body with those movements first. Mm -hmm. So before you ever go, so forever, you know, you should do that before you go do shoulder stuff for sure. But for the time being, I would probably eliminate shoulder pressing and movements like that for now until we, you start to feel really good with the retracting and depression. Yeah. It just has to be very intentional. Like after you go through this process of uh, mobility and kind of getting your, your shoulders set into, you know, to a degree where you feel stable, um, you know, taking that extra time in between every single rep to make sure that you're um, positioning yourself well, you're maintaining that posture, you're keeping that shoulder back and down uh, in, in some ways to do that too, to strengthen that. Um, it, you know, is to, to do like a uh, farmer walks, uh, but with really good posture with that, uh, lightweight, but then also to, you know, your suitcase carries, or, um, you can do like a shoulder packing with, with a, a kettlebell, but this is just where we add a bit of load to what you're already doing. So that way, you know, you get that kind of stimulus. So you can stay strong with that, uh, uh, w w that sequence that you're trying to You know, to what's, what's tough about this, Megan, is it's, uh, it's actually very simple fix. It was very common for me to get. But tough to do it yourself. But, yeah, doing yeah. it on your own because you, you have a movement pattern that's just going to show up. I could try something with you right now on camera if you want to try it, and we can see if we can kind of isolate what's going on. Um, you have a T-shirt underneath your jacket. Would you mind taking the yeah. jacket off? Okay. So what I'm going to have you do is, is let's have you – Stick one arm straight up in the air like you just did a shoulder press. Okay. Now keep your arm straight and see if you could drop that shoulder down. Oh, almost. You see how your elbow wants to bend? Yep. Okay. Pull so the shoulder so blade. keep yeah. your arm straight. Do it again. Straighten your arm. But pull the shoulder down. Pull it down. Pull it down. Shoulder down. Hold down, 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 yes. down, down. Good. It down. Now hold that position for me. And I want you to take, hold, bring the shoulder back down. I saw yeah. it come back up. Yeah. Bring it down. <laughs> okay, hold that. Now, while holding that, take the opposite ear and bring it down to your shoulder but slowly. Do you feel a little stretch there? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. there you go. Hold that position and practice that movement with both sides. Yep. Okay, practice that right there, both sides. But you got to keep the shoulder down. It's going to creep yeah. up on you. Right. You see how you, can you feel how it wants to pop up when you stop then, thinking about it for a second? the arm wants to come forward, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, Try the yeah, other side all too. All little nuances. Let's balance this out a little bit. Let's do the other side. So straighten it out. Now bring the shoulder down first. Bring it down. Bring oh, it that, down. That one's better. Oh, that's a bad one right there. Keep your head tall, by the way. Don't tuck your chin the way you are. There you go. Bring the shoulder down. Now try bring your ear down again on the other side a little bit. Uh, right there. Hold that. How's that feel? So what might help even is if you hold on to something with that hand that's up in the air, that might help you bring the shoulder down while doing that stretch. And that could take some of the tension off. But do you see how hard it was for you to isolate that movement while keeping your arm overhead? Okay. So that's kind of what we're dealing with. Do you have holding your arm behind you and then pulling your shoulder back and down? That's another one. Do you have, yeah, um, do you, yeah, yeah, there you go. Do you have access to like a, a really good trainer or maybe someone who can do correctional exercise with you? A movement specialist. Um, I'm not sure. I'd have to look into it. I'm in like a rural part of Iowa. So I think okay. there's like two trainers in hmm. a 45 mile radius. Okay. Well, let's do this. Do you have maps prime pro? I don't, I just have muscle mommy. Okay. We're going to send you prime pro and in there there's scapula mobility movements. Those are the ones I would want you to look at. Yeah. Okay. And what Sal just taught you right now is something that you can practice all day long. I would practice throughout the that, day. Yeah. Every time you like, if you find yourself sitting at the computer or desk for a while and you haven't done that, take a little two minute break, do that on each side. And like, and a lot of this is just retraining the brain neurologically to, yeah. to be able to do that. So it's not like we have to go train and exercise really hard to fix this. It's really just getting in the routine of the ability. Like you want to get to a place where on command, you can do that like quick and easy, yep. you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's when you know you're, and that's a, that's a good thing to try and practice. The better you are at doing that, the easier it's going to be to apply it when you're, when you're exercising. Okay. Thank you. You yes. got it. Yep. Well, all right. Thanks, Megan. Thanks. You know, what's tough about that is I used to get clients like that all the time. You I would, I would fix that in a week. You said it perfectly. Yeah. It's very easy to fix. It's very difficult for a person to know how to do it. Themselves. Yeah. Cause like, she can't move. Like even way. with you yeah, doing you it on camera, yourself. 
you, you can know, see if, if you, I was there, I'd be able to put my hands right. on and, yeah. and if yeah. you weren't cueing her what she was doing wrong, she wasn't going to adjust and fix know. it. Yeah. So if you're not like, ah, ah don't, don't let it slide yeah. up. You just let it slide up. Like yeah. you can see that and give feedback. It requires that. So even though it's such a simple thing, it's really difficult to, I mean, again, this is why. I mean, this is why we have our test with the wall. Yeah. And so this is why, this is why our profession exists. Like well, really good it. coaches and trainers have this ability to see that totally. and then help somebody figure that out for themselves. Like it's just something you can't, you can watch a million YouTube videos on that. Yeah. And it's like tough to, to piece that together. Totally. Look, if you like our show, head over to mindpumpfree.com. We have a fat loss guide. It's free. Gives you steps on how to lose body fat easy and sustainably. You can also find us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. <laughs>